All praise to the Most High. We give Him glory and honor. Hallelujah. Psalm 27. Clap your hands, all ye people. Let's give a prayer to the Most High. Hallelujah. I bow and honor you, Most High. You are great, mighty, good, awesome. There is none like you. Thank you for your love and kindness. Hey, you are great. I confess my sins. Please forgive me of anything I've done to offend you or to offend others. Wash me, purge me, and cleanse me, I pray. Please let your Holy Spirit enter into this session, into this message. May you anoint me to speak this word, to bless your people. Father, speak through me. Hallelujah. Empower me. Hallelujah. And let us be blessed. Let us hear and be blessed. And let us be changed and transformed. Hallelujah. And receive the goodness that you have for us. <clears throat> In your holy name, I pray to you. Thank you. Amen. You said and get that. My hand praise again. Let's go to um, 1 Samuel 19. So 1 Samuel 1, 19 to 20. And this is part two. The Most High answers prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Answered prayer. 1 Samuel 1, 19. And they rose up in the morning early and worship before the Most High. It's lovely to wake up with a fresh anointing to give the most high glory and honor and praise to wake up. You know, um, we all have our different times of worship. Some have their three time, 3 p.m. worship, a.m., uh, 12 a.m. worship in the midnight. You know what happened with Paul and Silas prayed and at midnight, hallelujah. What happened, the prison foundation was shaken, the doors were open, chains were broken, hallelujah, at midnight. David said, at midnight do I rise to give thanks unto thee. Something about that midnight prayer at 12 a.m., some people have their prayer time at 2 p.m. They say that's the time to pray against the forces of darkness, the mermaid kingdom. Some pray at 3 uh, a.m. Some say that is the mercy prayer. And then some may have their 5 a.m. And, you know, different times when we worship to the Most High and all throughout the day. So, and, and the scripture says, and they rose up in the morning early and worship. <laughs> what a wonderful thing to wake up and to worship the Most High. Sometimes we have so many things on our mind disturbing us, right? God will keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stayed on the Isaiah 26 and 3. So to wake up with the most high on our mind is a wonderful way to start our day. They say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Prayer and worship is the most important. Hallelujah. To start our day. Hallelujah. And they worship before the most high and return and came to their house. There's nothing like worship in the most high. Hallelujah. Say, brother, you did a good job, sister. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. But to give worship to the most high. Hallelujah. Only he gets it. Hallelujah. Only the Most High gets my worship, hallelujah, and he deserves my worship, hallelujah. I give him all the glory, I bow and honor him, hallelujah. I thank him so much for creating me to worship him, hallelujah. Mm. All right, so after that, they, um, they returned and they came to their house, Jerama, and we're talking about Hannah, right? And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, so they got together, right? They got together, all praise to the Most High, and what happened when they came together? The Most High remembered her. All praise to the Most High for remembering us. He told us to remember him. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And then he'll remember us. Hallelujah. He remembered her. He remembered her. He remembered her. He remembered what? Her prayer. Because she prayed. She prayed for a man child, right? And what happened? She was in bitterness of soul. Remember the previous message? And she prayed unto the Most High and wept so. That's verse 10. And she vowed a vow and said, uh, <clears throat> and said, O Yah of hosts, I say, Yah for Lord. If thou wilt indeed look on the affliction <clears throat> of thy handmaiden, she saw barrenness as an affliction, as a burden. You know, it was something uh, not good for her. It was a distress for her because we know that the womb is supposed to bring forth, right? It's there to produce. And remember me. She asked the Most High to remember her. Hallelujah. And not forget thine handmaiden, but will give unto thine handmaiden a man child. She asked specifically for a man child. Then will I give him unto, the, unto you all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. He'll be a Nazarite. So here comes the fruit of her prayer. Hallelujah. I love it. I love it. I love it. And he remembered her. The husband and the wife, they got together. Her husband. Hallelujah. This is a, a, a two-part thing, okay? A partnership. The husband and the wife have to come together to make that baby all that seed meets, uh, that egg meets that sperm. Hallelujah. They say there's how many of them? Millions of them that are swimming around, but that one, all you need is one. Hallelujah. And it comes together. Hallelujah. And bam, here comes that baby. Mm. And the Most High remembered her. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Verse 20. Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son. Just what she asked for she got and called his name Samuel. Saying, because I have asked him of the Most High. It's wonderful when you ask a child from the Most High and he gives you that child. When you first of all dedicate that child to the Most High. 
And yes, we can see where many of us have gone wrong with that part. Hello? Dedicating the child to the most, sometimes we're just having babies, and, right? They're just coming as a product of, you know, of the coming together. But, you know, sometimes we're so caught up in, in this human journey and this human walk. We're forgetting to do things. But Hannah, because she didn't have a child, because it was a challenge for her, that provoked, right, her to consecrate the child. It's something about the circumstance that brought about that consecration of that child, all praises to the Most High, that set the destiny, his destiny in motion, hallelujah, that he would be consecrated to the Most High. And what an awesome thing to have a consecrated child, as did um, the mother of uh, the Messiah, um, Mary and, and Yosef, that they had the Messiah. He came forth and he was a holy child to be consecrated. He came with a mission. All praises to have children who have an anointing and a mission on their life to live for the most high. That is what we want our children to be holy and to live for the most high. Hello. So we can sleep at night. All praises and the most high gets all the glory. Let's look at Psalm 65 and 2. Part 2. Yah answers prayer. Hallelujah. And we're going to be looking a little bit at the priest, the prophet, priest, and judge. This was the product of her prayer. Look at what? Hannah and Elkanah birds. Hallelujah. When the man and the woman can come together and we're talking about our people. So we're talking about the so-called black man, right? And so-called black woman, the African continental and those of us who are scattered diaspora throughout the four corners of the earth because we believe the Bible is very much about us. We African people, about our heritage, about our culture, about our destiny, about the plans that the most I have for us. It's all up and through this Bible. And so, yes, the prophet priest and judge. All right. So let's do the Psalms 65 and 2. And I kind of just want to thumb through my Bible. I just kind of feel like that. So I just go into the internet. All right. 65 and 2. Okay. Praise waiteth for thee, O Yah, in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. <clears throat> because she vowed a vow. Like, if you give me this child, I'll consecrate this child to you all the days of his life. No razor will be on his head. He'll be holy. He'll be consecrated unto you. Hmm. I'm sure the Most High made the Most High excited that he's a child is coming that's going to be doing some good, right? Because we know they're vessels of honor in the book of Romans and vessels of what? Dishonor. But I'll praise the Most High that may I, the, what comes forth from us, may what we produce be good and give glory and honor to Yah. Now, looking at the specifics again of Hannah's prayer, a male child, she prayed specifically. So let's be careful how we pray and what we pray for. Direct our prayer, obviously, to the Most High and be specific about it. Like when we go to the restaurant, all right, we order a burger or we order, um, say, lamb or chicken. When it well done, no blood. There's no blood. All this rare meat, that is of the devil. That's not our heritage. That's not our culture. But because we got mixed in, we started doing what these other nations do. Well done. Okay. Clean meat. All right. And, um, you know, no salt. A little salt. Or when we get on the plane, right? Last, my last flight, I totally, completely forgot to ask for a specific meal. You can ask for vegan. You can ask for kosher, uh, low sodium, right? And or vegetarian. And you can ask for that on the plane. Specific, right? But um, when you're ordering something on the internet, say you want a dress, you want it yellow, right? You're looking for flowers, you're looking for polka dots, you're looking for prints, or you're looking for no print, you want a praying color. We specifically know what we're going after. We need to do the same thing when it comes to the most high. Tell him what we want. He already knows. But, you know, he's going to listen to your prayer. Just as she prayed, that's what she got. All praise to the most high. A male child. Why? Because the males are the head of the household. Yes. And all praise to the most high for males. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so she asked for a male child, and that child came forth. So let's continue on. Now, as I mentioned before, other cultures were killing their female children because there were so many females and they wanted males. But we don't see, I don't see that in the Bible anywhere, except, yes, that did happen. But not because there were too many females, because they wanted to take out the nation. And if you want to attack a nation, you're going to attack what? The head. As we see that throughout our culture, it happened in the time of um, just after Joseph had passed away and all that generation had passed away. What happened? The, the chosen people, the Israelites were growing, 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 growing. And Pharaoh was intimidated by that. And what did he say? 
We're going to kill these people because they're going to side with our enemies and then they're going to overtake us. And so they attacked the males, started killing the males. That's when Moses was set aside, consecrated for his mission. And then at the time of the Messiah, when he was born, again, another attack on males. The Herod, he killed many male children. And so, yes, but it's a different story in terms of these other nations, these Asian nations were killing females because there's too many of them, right? And maybe there was a shortage of males. We see it throughout history against our males that there's an attack. Look at the prison system. Is the prison system not filled up with our males and our women? What do you have when you have a decline in male leadership? You have households that are what? Headless, right? Not uh, literal, but figurative. The head is not there. The person who runs the household, the priest of the household, the judge of the household, the prophet of the household is the man, right? And if the man's not there, then things are going to be what? Out of order. So there, throughout history, there has been attack on male. So it's a wonderful thing that Hannah prayed for a male child, all praises to the Most High, because the Most High has given the man the commission to be the head of the household. That is his assignment. Hallelujah. So now let's continue. So, and Yah created his creation to be fruitful. Hallelujah. So, we praise the Most High that even though these other nations come up with these policies talking about, what do they call it? Um, oh, there's a word. Um, when you're trying to decrease the population, we know all the different kinds of attacks, the medical attacks, right? All the kinds of attacks. That's what I'm thinking of. And decreasing the population is also putting our men in prison. Right? Then you have all women. And where's the man? So it's, that's that's a uh, population attack. But the one I'm thinking about is the one where they try to give you um, uh, what do they call it when they're trying to give you these pills so that you stop producing I can't even think of it let me look it up on the internet uh, yeah these clinics it's called um, <laughs> you know what I can't even think of it let me see it's going to come um, hmm. uh contraceptives but that ain't even it it's another word i don't know why it's not coming so yeah that's an agenda that they use against our people to try to stop them from having children right these clinics were set up in um low-income neighborhoods where our people are uh, dominant in number and start giving you these pills so you can't have babies uh-huh right Planned Parenthood. Bam. There it is. That's the word I'm looking for. So yeah, Planned Parenthood. No, that's just an attack trying to decrease our people. Most I said be fruitful and multiply because, you know, he wanted his people to populate the earth. Hallelujah. To dominate. Hallelujah. And to have authority and rule over that which he commanded us to rule over. So I'll praise to the man. When the man's in place, things are in order. Praise Yah for Hannah's prayer. Pray for a man child that would be holy. Hallelujah. Not just a man, not just having the man in the household who's the head, but when he's a righteous man, everything is in order. You know, when there's no man around, the woman's trying to raise children. Come on now. It's not easy. Yelling and screaming and fighting. She's she's trying to have to take on that role where she has to be harsh and, and rough, you know, and masculinity is coming out when she's a female. She doesn't want to do that. And it's not easy. So look what was happening. This has been happening all throughout our, throughout um, the history of us as a people, right? Because even wars depopulates us, right? Hmm. Let's continue. So now we see the product of our prayer. It was a righteous seed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah again for the product of Hannah. It's Hannah's prayer. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't just Hannah alone. It was her and her husband who had to come together. Teamwork makes the dream work. All praises. Hallelujah. So now let's continue. And then she gave thanks to Yah after he remembered her. Hallelujah. The Most High will remember you. Hallelujah. He will remember you, daughters of Yah. Keep praying. He will remember you. He hears you. The eyes of Yah upon the righteous and his ears open unto their cry. All right. And so then she gives thanks to Yah. She gives an offering in verse uh, 24. Let's read that. Let's not forget to say thank you to the Most High. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks, and one he for a flower and a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of Yah in Shiloh. And the child was young. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, oh, my Lord, as 
thy soul liveth, my Lord. I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the Most High. Hallelujah. So it's like, oh, it's awesome when you can go to the person that um, agreed because Eli, even though there's some wrong stuff that's about to come, back, come about in this instance, um, it was um, uh, something profitable and good where he agreed with her in the prayer. Remember, he said, as you pray, let it be. She's like, I'm the woman that was praying. He was crying out and bitter of soul. And bam, look what the Most High has done for me. So she's given her offering and thanks. And let's, again, as I said, let's not forget to give the Most High thanks when he does something good for us. Give that offering, or whether you want to pour out a drink offering unto him, or whatever offering, Thanksgiving offering, fellowship offering, however you want to bless the Most High, hallelujah, and give thanks unto him. For this, verse 27, this child I prayed, and the most I have given me, my petition, which I asked of him. <laughs> therefore, I therefore have lent him to the Most High. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Most High. And she worshiped the Most High there, and she worshiped again. Hallelujah. So yes, when the Most High does something for us, <clears throat> it produces, it provokes worship. Hallelujah. After we prayed, we've been struggling, bitter of soul, crying, years may have passed. And the Most High, bam, he remembers, he answers. And he does it in his own time and his own way. Hallelujah. So we want to thank him for that. And so let's talk about the, the product of her prayer. Let's get a little bit more into the destiny of the child. So the destiny was set in motion because she said, I'm going to lend him to you. He's going to be a consecrated unto child. And you know, raise is going to be on his head. It means the hair is going to grow. Grow, grow, grow. Locks. Hmm. Hello, all praises. Hallelujah. So we know who are the people of the book. The child's destiny was set in motion before he was born by the prayer of his mother. Hallelujah. All praises for women, those daughters of Zion who are righteous women seeking Yah. Hallelujah. And praying unto Yah for what they need. Hallelujah. She said he would be consecrated to the Most High in verse 11. She vowed a vow. O Yah, if thou will indeed look on my affliction. Hallelujah. If thy hand the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me. Hallelujah, remember me. Hallelujah. Mm, all praises to the Most High. So, she produced a righteous child. Samuel was a blessed child. He walked in the ways of the Most High, and he did that which the Most High commanded him in all the days of his life during his um, assignment, or his earthly assignment, there was peace to some degree um, with the chosen people, the scripture says. Let me find that scripture. All the days of Samuel. Let me see. Mm. Uh, I have to find it. Let me try to find it. I'm feeling a breakthrough. For a song I don't know about you. I'm feeling a breakthrough. I'm glad I do. I'm feeling a breakthrough. I want to encourage you to, I'm feeling a breakthrough, I'm glad I do. Hallelujah, I'm feeling a breakthrough, hallelujah. So let me find that. So when there's a righteous ruler, you see there's peace. Mm -hmm. First Samuel 7, uh, 15, let's read that. First mm -hmm. Samuel 7 and 15. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. And he went from year to year in circuit of Bethel and Gilgal and Mizpah and judged Israel in all in all those places. And in his return, and his return was to Ramah there. For there was his house, and there he judged Israel, and there he built an altar unto the Most High. Mm, but the one that said there was peace and there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. Okay. And the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored. All praises to Israel. Hallelujah. For giving things back that have been taken from the people of things that are coming back to Africa. All the thievery that's been going on in Africa. All praises to the Most High. The Most High, we believe, is going to restore Africa again. All the thieving, all the pillaging mm, from Africa. Oh, we all know about it. May the Most High restore it back. All right, and so from Ekron even unto Gath, <clears throat> and the coast thereof did Israel gather out of the hands of the Philistines, and there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. Um, oh, verse 13, so the Philistines were subdued, and they came no more in the coast of Israel, and the hand of Yah 
was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. That's what I meant there. So the enemies of the Most High's people was, uh, um, there was peace uh, against, the, uh, those enemies were not able to overtake uh, the chosen people under Samuel's uh, rulership. Hallelujah. He, he operated as a prophet, a priest, and a judge. Uh, praise So let's continue. And again, this was the product of her prayer. She prayed for this child to be consecrated unto the Most High. And again, the Most High brought forth that um, the fruit of that prayer by bringing forth a child, a man who was righteous. Hallelujah. Now, oh, so in contrast, the product of our prayer or comparison, um, Eli's sons were kind of like the, not kind of like, they were the absolute opposite. Eli, the very same one who agreed with Hannah for a righteous child, he himself had children who were disturbing disturbing, doing all kind of disrespectful things, desecrating the Most High's sacrifices. And they were priests running around with women at the tabernacle, at the, at, um, at the, um, near the tabernacle. What is it? Very defiled behavior. And the Most High destroyed them as a result. So yeah, sometimes righteous children can come forth and sometimes unrighteous. And you know, it depends. So may the Most High help us to be that which produces righteous children. But sometimes you can have a righteous parent and you do your best to live a righteous life before the child or the children. And sometimes they will still take the wrong path. But we do our best to, to keep praying because the scripture says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he <clears throat> excuse me, will not depart from it. So I'll praise to that for the most to the most high. And so what else do we want to talk about? So again, daughters of Zion, keep praying. Keep reaching out and calling out to the Most High and believe in the Most High for what you need. He answers us in different ways. Maybe sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no, sometimes it's maybe. But again, he answers us in different ways. Not all women um, on this earth are able to produce a child. Some, you know, may not have that. You understand. They may not be able to produce a child even with prayer and all the other things that they may be doing. But again, the Most High deals with us all in different ways. We have to know him for ourselves and what his plan is for us. But maybe, the, uh, you know, he'll, he'll answer the prayer again in some type of different way. Or maybe the person's destiny will be, um, maybe they'll be around children. Maybe they'll have an orphanage. Or maybe they have a village of children around them, right? Or maybe they have family members. Who have lots of children and you know maybe that will make up for it but again he deals with us in different ways but he does answer prayer uh -huh. and the the, the 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 purpose and the the main message is that we don't stop praying to know that the most high has a plan for all of us he deals with us all in different ways and that it's wonderful when that we can bring forth something purposefully that is intentionally directed towards the Most High. Hallelujah. And that should be all of our desires to bring forth something, to produce that which honors the Most High. What else is there? We only want to honor Him. So that should be our main goal. That The things that we're doing is going to give glory and honor to Him, not to ourselves, not vanity, right? Look at me. Mm, mm. No, look at the Most High. Hallelujah. We direct all the glory to Him as the Messiah did. He honored the Father. He gave him all the glory and all the honor. When Satan tried to come up to him and told him to bow down and worship him, he said, hmm, rebuked him and said, you only bow down and worship the Most High. Hallelujah. He kept the commandments. All right. He knew. He knew who gets the glory. Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High. And so what else did I want to say Um. Uh, in the message? Let me just make sure I mentioned all the things that I wanted to mention. Uh, yeah, looks like I did. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so let's just keep on believing the Most High for what we need. He knows what we need even before we ask. Let's not be afraid to ask and let's not limit the Most High. There's nothing he can't do. I mean, we limit him based on our own uh, finite thinking as human beings. But we have to look at the Most High's track record. He's amazing. There's nothing he can't do. So all praises be unto the Most High for the glory and honor. Keep praying, keep trusting, keep hoping. Hallelujah. The Most High answers prayer. Till next time, by His grace.